I've been waiting to do this for a while, and in today's video, I'm finally gonna set up Plex DVR and check out the new live TV feature that they launched like a week or two ago. If you're a developer or just a techie in general and want your own domain name, you probably know it can be a pain in the butt to get one that simple. That's where .tech comes in. Not only is it easier to find a domain name that fits your needs, but it's also a little more fitting to fly your tech flag high and proud. Techies from Edgar from TechSource, Andrew from GearLive, and Dom Esposito have already gotten theirs set up. So, of course, you know, I had to make ByteMyBits.tech forward directly to my YouTube channel. To claim your spot in the tech space with your own custom .tech domain, go to Git.tech and make sure to use the promo code BNB1 at checkout to get your domain for only $4.99. So yeah, I got a sponsor. It's kind of cool. First, like, pre-roll out I've ever done, but it's for a reason. The reason is, is because I actually had to spend some money in order to get this video done today. I had to buy this. This is the home run DVR that allows you to either A, watch live TV through Plex, or B, record those TV shows automatically and store them to your server. Now, there are some other things that you can do with this with some like separate scripts that help you take out commercials, I think, but I'll have to explore that later on down the line once I have a chance to get this set up and explore more. On top of that, I got this, I think. Yeah, okay. This is, from my understanding, a pretty good antenna. I don't know if it's the best, but it is, according to the reviews, pretty good. So hopefully this works for me. Now, the thing is, in my new house, I'm not necessarily in the country because I still have good internet service, but I'm a little far out. I'm kind of on the outskirts, so I'm a little worried about whether or not I'm going to be able to get signal. So I wanna check this out. Hopefully in this one part video, I really hope that it's one part video. I hate two part videos, but uh, if I have to make a two part video, I will because I'm not entirely sure how well this is gonna work and how in depth I have to get in my installation in order to get signal. So I'm gonna set it up, see how the signal is, and then kind of go from there. Now to set it up though, I'm gonna start off in my basement down here. Uh, it's gonna be a bad test because I know that I'm in the basement and basements get terrible signal, um, but I just wanna test it out. And then if that doesn't work, I'm sorry, when that doesn't work, I'm gonna move the antenna upstairs and see if I get better signal out there. So basically, this is pretty much a testing phase before I dive like way deep into this to try to find a spot in my house where I can get signal, but it's still kinda sorta hidden from like public view or anybody that happens to come over basically. And in case you're wondering the hardware that I'm using today, this is the home run. Now Plex has opened up their hardware just a little bit to support other, you know, DVR systems, but it may not have been the cheapest one, but hey, that's why I got a sponsor for this video because yeah, but that's it. I'm going to check that out now. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do here is kind of a test run, and it's gonna be a dry test run. I'm not hooking it up to Plex yet. Pretty much I'm gonna put this mounting like hardware together on this antenna, and then I'm gonna hook it up to my TV, and I'm gonna see if I can get a signal while I'm down here, which it probably won't work, but that would just be amazing if it did, right? I mean, right? That is my fancy handiwork that I will use to test this around the house and see if I can get signal. Okay, so I have to be honest. I looked up my house and the map, the little map that you can look at that shows like where, you know, TV stations are broadcasting from in relation to your house and it like draws a line. It tells you, you know, where you can get the best signal. And the best signal for me is literally on the other side of the house and only on the other side of the house. So if I can pick up anything from in the basement pointing out the wrong window, I will be utterly amazed.
Okay, so it says I had 45 channels. 45. That's ridiculous. I don't believe it, but that's what it's saying. So I'm going to... I'm going to see if that's true. I don't know if I mentioned this in the last video, but I tried to do this before in my old house, but it, the signal quality was really, really bad. However, the difference there was I was using a very cheap, like $15 powered antenna that I purchased from Walmart. So the concept of that actually working where I was was already kind of a bad idea from the get go. So. That didn't work, I put that antenna away. In fact, I still have it upstairs and I haven't approached that since. But, apparently I have 45 channels, not all of them work. I think that I could probably reposition this somewhere in my house that's still kind of sorta out of the way, maybe even in my little closet door or yeah, my closet thing over there and possibly get more channels and uh, yeah, I mean, that's kind of cool because I was kind of worried I was going to have to put this either on the side of the house, on the top of the house, or in the attic, or something like that, but I'm already picking up quite a few channels out of the basement. And if I can get channels out of the basement, that's a pretty damn good antenna. I mean, I would show you the map of where all the things are, but that would be a map to where my house is, so I'm not going to do that. But they're pretty far away, I and mean, we're talking like 50 plus miles, some of those uh, new stations, like the one that... Um, well, it was the one a couple uh, a couple channels ago. That one's like 50 miles away or something, I think. But uh, it's coming in crystal clear. And even some of these things are coming in in 1080. So that is definitely impressive. I think from what I'm going to do now, um, I'm not going to record it. But I'm going to find a better position that's kind of sort of hidden away in my house. And then I'm going to hook up the HD Home Run to it. And I want to see if I can get, you know, Plex to... Uh, find that and you know add that to Plex and get the live TV and stuff through Plex and just see if that works But uh, as far as setting up and finding a better location, that's not as crappy looking as that I'm just gonna do that now off camera. Um, so Yeah Update time. Okay now. Oh actually let's try another place Update time! Alrighty, I got it installed, put it here, which is actually my studio is behind this wall. This is kind of like some random spare bedroom, so, um, or not spare bedroom, but a spare storage room. So I put another piece of board here, and then I mounted this fairly sturdily to that board, hooked that up there, ran the wires over here, pulled them through the baseboard underneath the uh, the floor upstairs into the utility room where it comes right through here. I use these extra uh, trim pieces to stick them all the way over there and then taped it to it and then pulled it over through here. So, wow, that color is crazy. I have just enough cable to drill through the wall somewhere around there behind my server, which is awesome because I can have the HD home run on my server and on the same backup power supply and just have everything all in one. So that's awesome. However, I don't know if the where I put this is going to work, this uh, the antenna in here. I don't know if it's going to work. I mean, where it's sitting, it's basically pointing right into a wall. But I did some testing walking around with my little testing thing that I had, like that little board I had set up, and it was getting signal in the middle of the basement. So. Uh, technically all of the towers that I'm trying to pull this off of are all facing that way anyways from this side of the house so if I have the best chance of getting service it's gonna be from either here or up on the attic or something like that so hopefully this works if not I'm gonna be pissed because I just went through all that installation and it doesn't work and I might cry but according to the reviews on this antenna with the little booster that it has it doesn't work very well if you use a longer coax cable. I don't know if that's true because it could be somebody who had bad connections or a really bad coax cable. So uh, I don't know, but either way, I don't have a longer coax cable. So I'm just working with what I have. And so far it looks like it should reach. So I'm just really praying to the noodle Lord that it will actually get good signal. If not, <sighs> either way, I pulled power over here just temporarily. I got the HD home run, ran through the wall there to connect to my switch and got everything set up everything hooked up everything ready to go and ready to power on now it's just a matter of powering on and seeing how it works but i have to load some stuff some stuff in the back of my truck for tomorrow to take to the cabinet repair guy because we have water damage so i kind of have to take a break Ugh.
Okay, so fast forward to day number two. I got caught up on the project kind of late uh, last night and for a couple reasons. The first reason is, is I could not get the live TV to work at all because I was not on the Plex Pass version. I, I did have to go in and after figuring out why it wasn't working, I went in and manually uh, specified to use the Plex Pass Plex Pass versions and then set that up and then test live TV. And I have to say, it works pretty good. I showed you where I installed the antenna, which is basically in my basement, the little spare storage room right here. So I have that installed. It's literally just like facing barely over where the dirt is outside. And it seems to get pretty dang good service. And I'm impressed and happy with that because I was really scared that I was gonna have to go up top on my attic or in my attic and install it somewhere in my attic, but no, it's pretty good service as it is. So let's just be like a, a proof of concept. Like I said, some of these towers that are, are, are far enough away from me, they're like 40 or 50 miles. This antenna is, uh, is picking that stuff up from downstairs in the basement and through my testing was doing it from the middle of the basement room. I was just like moving it around and it was still getting pretty good service. Of course, when I moved it, it was, you know, flaking out a little bit, but as a whole, it was working. So I don't really know like if most or all antennas act like that at that price point, but I do know that the antenna that I bought was definitely kind of uh, an expensive one for what it is. And uh, so far I can say that the price has been justified just because of the performance. I'm definitely impressed. As far as the live TV option, you know, it's kind of cool. Um, I'm not a huge TV watcher, mainly because I hate commercials. It is pretty cool. Once I got everything working, I was able to get everything loaded up. I don't know if this will show up. If I got that autofocus, I'll probably have to just reposition the camera. But uh, I can go in here and I can select the program guide. And then basically all I have to do is just go through and I can see like what's on currently. And that's pretty cool. Then I can see what's going to be scheduled. And then I can see what is coming up for TV shows that I already have on my server, and I can schedule it to record those TV shows automatically and then add that to my database. So that is pretty interesting. And this is like not a new feature either. This has been with Plex DVR since, you know, Plex DVR was in beta, actually when Plex DVR started being in beta. I will have to go through and check out those scripts. There's like a script, I don't know the name of it, I don't remember the name of it, but there is a script where you can run um, that script after your TV show plays and it will remove those commercials and then save those to your Plex server. So I have to check that out. Oh, and I have another, this is a weird issue. If you can help me out, anybody out there that uses this feature on a Linux build or, or an Unraid build, when Plex DVR saves these video files to my like my storage and it files them and it, and it makes the folders and everything, it sets the owner as nobody, like literally it's, a, it's an owner name of nobody. And I don't have permission to delete the damn thing. I can't get rid of it. So I did a test on like an old video or an old movie that was playing like from like the 1910s, I don't know what it is, but in like 1940s or 50s or something. But I did a test just cause I was playing with it and, and figuring out how everything worked. And I didn't want to record the whole thing and I didn't want the movie on my, on my server, but I couldn't go into the file structure and delete it. So, uh, and of course you can't delete it from the Plex interface. I don't, I wish I had the option to delete it. Actually, Plex, if you're listening, I want the option to delete recorded stuff from the web interface. If it's a DVR related item, you should have the option to delete it without going in to your file structure and deleting it manually. You should, I mean, come on. If I'm missing that feature and it's already there, I apologize. I've played with this all of like two hours, but really? But anyways, okay, so I can't go in there and delete it because I don't have the permissions. I can't change it whatsoever. So in order for me to delete it, I have to like go in through SSH and change the ownership underneath root and then delete it that way. So that's kind of a pain in the butt. So if anyone knows how to fix what owner Plex DVR will assign video and folders to, uh, as, please let me know in the comments. I would love to figure that out so I can you know, continue using the DVR service, but I can also go through and delete stuff that maybe I don't want to keep or I was just testing or, well, just for anything. I mean, I wanna, I wanna own, my, own my damn files. You know, I don't want it to be signed to nobody. I mean, but anyways, once I get in here, I can set it up and I can view 
what is currently playing. So like, let's say Stargate S SG-1, that's currently playing. I don't know what that's playing on, but that says it's currently playing. Once you load it up, you can see the little play button and you can also see the record button. So you can control it from here to set up your device to record it. I think you can, yeah, I'm pretty sure you can. Yeah, so once you do that, hit play. It'll just load it up just like, it's a little delayed. It's not perfect. Obviously it's got some transcode. It's got to work with other hardware, not just your server. Uh, so there is a little bit of a delay there in getting everything set up. Ooh, hey, hold on. Oh, I know this episode. I like this episode. Anyway, so you can play it and I'm pretty sure this isn't like recording it or adding it to my library, even though that's already in my library. But it is pretty cool that you can do this anywhere and now, again, since this release, this thing works on any iOS and Android device, which, which I use an Xbox for my main entertainment. I don't use my iPhone very often. Son of a... I had to test it out. I, I pretty much knew already just from the announcement and the briefing that I had that it's not gonna work on Xbox, but I figured I should test it anyways, just to make sure. That kind of sucks. I do have a Fire TV that I guess I could technically hook up that I'm not using right now because I still haven't put a TV upstairs yet because I sold the other one when we moved. So technically until I get that TV, which yes, wifey, I'm getting a TV up there. Technically I can hook that up down here if I ever needed to, uh, I'm pretty sure that's Android, right? Yes, I'm certain that, that Fire TV is Android. So I could hook that up and if I needed to use that, I could to watch live TV that will be a temporary band-aid if for whatever reason I wanted to. Not that I watch a lot of live TV, either way, it's possible. I'll probably look into that in the future. Uh, right now, I was just mainly getting it installed, testing it out, uh, seeing how easy it was to get working, and it was very easy to get working once I had the right update. You go through the setup screen, everything is very easy to get set up, everything's very e easy to configure. It's a little slow as far as like scanning the channels and then uh, scanning for and downloading the program guide. That's something I noticed that's a little slow in doing that. Actually, it's way slow getting the program guide, but maybe that's just the first initial thing. And and maybe it's not really Plex's fault. It's like a server thing, I don't know, but it takes a long time. Once you get past all that though, everything seems to run really smoothly. You can go through, you can set it to record pretty easily. Uh, you can schedule to record, you know, every single episode of a, of a series if you want to, or just a single episode. Now that I have this installed, I'm going to be exploring other things with it as far as, you know, maybe some tutorials, uh, maybe some scripts that you can run post, you know, recordings, you know, maybe follow up with some of that commercial deletion. I'm not sure yet. There's a lot of things that I can, you know, kind of dive into and check out, especially now that I have all the hardware installed and set up and purchased and all that. Uh, now I can get in and just kind of play around with the new feature, which so far seems pretty cool. If you guys have any questions about it, uh, let me know in the comments. I'll try to address those as I go along, as I play around with them. If I, if I run across an answer to whatever questions you have, I will try to provide an answer to you. But anyways, guys, thank you for watching as always. I, <laughs> but anyways, guys, thank you for watching as always. I appreciate every single one of you. Like and subscribe below and have a great day.